We are to be a kingdom of priests. And today in Exodus chapter 28, we're going to be looking at the high priest and the symbols that the high priest is supposed to wear to remind him and remind others of his position, that he is to stand between God and the nation. He is supposed to uh, atone for sins. He is not the high priest. He is the temporary high priest until the true high priest, Jesus Christ, came. But we have a lot of things to learn here about uh, the role of the priest, since we are called to be each of us priests. If you have made it thus far into Exodus and you've watched all uh, other 27 chapters of Exodus up till now, let us know down in the comments down below. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, joining in here. We've uh, uh, I've seen the numbers kind of waning a little bit, so glad that you are here. So make sure you hit that thumbs up button so that uh, if someone hasn't watched in a bit, <laughs> this will pop up in their feed, hopefully. But before we dive into the passage here today in Exodus chapter 28, and we'll be looking at some visuals here too to try to understand what's going on, uh, let's have a time of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just pray that you would open our eyes to what you have to teach us through, through what you had the high priest to wear. Lord, help us to understand our role and uh, how we should live and, and the high calling that you put on our lives. Lord, we pray all these things in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. All right, friends. Uh, so we are going to be in Exodus chapter 28 and looking at the priestly garments here. Um, before we dive in here, let's just give you a quick glance at what the high priest garments look like. Um, so that you can then kind of, uh, some of this will kind of make sense. So we got a, we got a turban up here and it's going to have something written right on the front here. They're going to have this ephod, a sleeveless garment uh, that's going to be important for priests with a sash. There's going to be this breastplate, which we'll talk about, and then two shoulder stones with stuff engraved, engraved upon them. And then they're to wear this like linen uh, tunic underneath. That's uh, going to be called an undergarment, but uh, it's a just a surface level shirt, I guess. Um, like a shirt under your shirt, that type of thing. Type of thing. So this is kind of what the high priest is going to look like uh, when we get, get done with him. But uh, obviously with the text, it's going to be described uh, in with words as opposed to with pictures. So with that in mind, let's dive into Exodus chapter 28. Have your brother Aaron with his sons come to you from the Israelites to serve me as priest. This is God speaking, right? Aaron, his sons Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithamar. Make holy garments for your brother Aaron for glory and for beauty. You are to instruct, so it's not supposed to be ugly. It's supposed to be convey authority and also to uh, be beautiful in appearance. You are to instruct all the skilled artisans whom I have filled with a spirit of wisdom to make Aaron's garments for consecrating him to me, uh, to serve me as priest. These are the garments that they must make a breast piece, uh, an ephod, a robe, a specially worn woven tunic, a turban, and a sash. They are to make holy garments for your brother Aaron and his sons so that they may serve me as priests. They should use gold, purple, uh, gold, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and fine linen. Now, let's uh, define a few of the things in here. First off, uh, we have this these holy garments. Now, we need to remember what the word holy means, right? It means set apart, special. They're special garments for this task. Only the high priest is supposed to wear them. Only the priests are supposed to wear their outfits. This is not supposed to be like, you know, a new fashion trend that the high priest is wearing that. And everyone's like, hey, that's pretty spiritual to do. I should do that too. No, uh, no one else is supposed to do this. Even if you have the money to go replicate this, you're not supposed to go and wear this, right? This is only for the people in the office. They're supposed, it's supposed to be a marker. And when they're in the office, they don't get to wear whatever clothes they want 
uh, today's a Monday. I'm going to wear something different. No, today is another day that I am high priest. So therefore I must wear the high priestly robes and all of the accoutrements, not, not leaving out something. It's not like, oh, well, the, the, the ephod is in the laundry. So therefore we're going to uh, wear something different today. They must wear this all the time. When they're serving before the Lord, they are to wear this uniform. And we're going to see why each piece is different, is important and how they're going to be uh, reminding the priest and the people around them of important facts. But notice something here, that Aaron is called to be the priest, not Moses. Moses is supposed to rule the people. He is serving kind of as a, well, he's serving clearly in the role of prophet. In the Old Testament, we kind of have these three roles, prophet, priest, and king. And God is assuming the role of king here. And Moses is taking the office of prophet. And so instead of making one person multiple things, we see that Moses is not to be the priest as well. Aaron is supposed to be the priest. And Aaron is not <clears throat> as good of a guy as Moses is. We're going to see that Aaron's going to make some really bad mistakes here. And yet God is calling a separate man to serve in a separate office. And we see kind of the division of powers that God splits up this role into three places, the king, the priest, and the prophet. Because no one man can be all things until the man Jesus Christ, who then comes and becomes the king, the prophet, and the priest forevermore. Praise the Lord. So we have this, this clear, set-apart uh, group of people, Aaron and his sons, the prophets are not to be from uh, father to son, but we do see that the priests are to pass from father to son. And that's interesting. The priestly role is supposed to be uh, passed down through a family, a specific family, Aaron and his sons. And uh, the greater priesthood is supposed to be uh, for the Levites, the tribe of Aaron. Actually, the tribe of Moses, too, but uh, who's counting? Verse 6. They are to make the ephod of finely spun linen, but it's to be embroidered with gold, with blue, purple, and scarlet yarn. It must have two shoulder pieces attached to its edges so that it can be joined together. The artistically woven waistband that is on the ephod must be of one piece according to the same workmanship of gold, of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and of finely spun linen. Take two uh, onyx uh, stones and, and engrave on them the names of Israel's sons, six of their names on the first stone and the remaining six names on the second stone. We're talking about these little stones right here, okay, on the shoulder. Um uh, whether they're like on the front of the shoulder or on the top of the shoulder uh, is something you'll see them kind of not sure about. But uh, so on the first onyx stone, there is uh, six names of the tribes of Israel. And on the second stone, there are six names of the tribe of, tribes of Israel. Engrave this, the two stones with the names of Israel's sons as a gem cutter engraves a seal. Mount them. Surround them with gold filigree settings. Fasten both stones on the shoulder pieces of the ephod as memorial stones for the Israelites. Aaron will carry their names on his shoulders before the Lord as a reminder. Fashion gold filigree settings, the two chains of pure gold, you will make them of braided cord work and attach the, ch the cord uh, chains to the settings. So we have a chain as well. Um, but why the shoulders? Why the six names on each shoulder? He should feel the weight of the responsibility 
for the people that he is to be serving. The sins of the people should be upon his shoulders. The uh, the, the weight of responsibility to make sure that they are living rightly weighs on his shoulders. It's a reminder to him and a reminder to everyone else. But in addition to that, there is a breast piece. We're going to be talking about this thing right here now. So three stones, three stones, three stones, three stones. And adds up to 12, and you can probably guess where that's going as well. Each stone is going to be um, engraved with one of the tribe's names. All right. You are to make an embroidered bre breast piece for making decisions. So it's going to be uh, woven out of cloth, right? Make it with the same workmanship as the ephod. Make it of gold, of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine spun linen. It must be square, folded double, nine inches long and nine inches wide. Now, this is going to create like a little pouch, which we'll get to in just a moment. Place a setting of gemstones on it, four rows of stones. The first row should be a row of carnelian, topaz, and emerald. The second row of turquoise, lapis lazuli, and a diamond. The third row, uh, a jacinth, an agate, and an <laughs> amethyst. I actually have my little notes down here uh, with the uh, pronunciations that I looked up uh, to remind myself. In the fourth row, a barrel, an onyx, and a jasper. They should be adorned with gold filigree in their settings. The 12 stones are to correspond to the names of Israel's sons. Each stone must be engraved like a seal with one of the names of the 12 tribes. So each stone has a name of the tribe of Israel. Now, this is once again a reminder. Uh, not only is the weight of their sin and the the on his shoulders, but on his chest, his purpose, his being is to intercede on behalf of these people. He is their representative. Each person that looks at him will see the stone for their tribe that represents them. And they will see that he is their high priest before God. And he is to remember that it is from these 12 tribes that he gains um, his purpose. Just to kind of drive that back to us being priests. If we are to be priests, should we not remember who we are responsible for? Steve, um, I'm just responsible for me. Maybe my family too. Friends, we are to be a nation of priests who are responsible for all the people. We're responsible for the lost people surrounding us. We're responsible for the, the Christians that God has surrounded us with. We're responsible for all these people. We may not put their names upon our shoulders. We may not put their names upon um, our hearts, over our hearts, but we need to remember that our calling is to serve these people. We are their priest. If they know you, if you know them, you're their priest. If they know God directly, then, then there's a, a, a sense in which you are also their priest. But especially for those who do not have a direct connection to God, you are their lifeline to God. How else shall they hear what God has to say to them except through you? Who is going to pray for them if not you? We must bear the burden, the responsibility for all the people that God has entrusted to us. Oftentimes we think about, we forget. We forget what's on our breastplate. We forget what's on our shoulders. We forget that we have the responsibility for the people around us. You are to make braided chains of pure gold cord for uh, work for the breast piece. 
fashion two gold rings to the breast piece and attach them to its corner. So this breast piece has to go onto them somehow. So they have to have chains and gold cords, right? Then attach the two gold cords to the gold ring, two gold rings at the corners of the breast piece. Attach the ends, uh, the other ends of the cords to the filigree settings. And in this way, attach them to the ephod's shoulder piece, uh, pieces to the front. Make two other gold rings and put them uh, at the other corners of the breast piece on the edge that is near uh, next to the inner border of the ephod. Make two gold rings and attach them to the bottom of the ephod's two shoulder pieces and its front close to the seam. Above the ephod's woven waistband, the artisans are to tie the breast piece from its rings to the rings of the ephod with a cord of blue yarn so that the breast piece is above the ephod's waistband and does not come loose from the ephod. All right, so it's supposed to be stuck to him, <laughs> right? Lots of cords just binding it to him. Whenever he enters the sanctuary, Aaron is to carry the names of Israel's sons over his heart on the breast piece for decisions. As a continual reminder before the Lord, place the Urim and the Thummim, uh, the breast piece uh, for decisions. This is basically, uh, as best we can tell, a white stone and a black stone. Okay, and basically, you go before the Lord, like, should we go up and attack these people? And it reaches in and pulls out one of the stones. And if it's a certain color, it means yes. And a certain color it means no. And this is to be the way of God's communicating to them. So we're going to see in the Old Testament, they're going to go up to the high priest and ask him questions. And they're going to seek the Lord. They're going to intercede before the Lord. They're going to ask the Lord to answer them. And so they're going to get these um, these answers from the Urim and the Thummim. Uh, and it's going to go into the breast piece uh, underneath the, uh, the 12 tribes. Aaron will continually carry the means of decisions for the Israelites over his heart before the Lord. So that is one of the chief roles as a high priest, you're to make offerings, you're to, to make sacrifices on behalf of people. You are to, um, which is the high priest's role, which is Jesus. He made the ultimate sacrifice for us. We are to uh, announce this sacrifice and call people to repentance. Uh, we are to pray for people. We are to also, uh, we are to help give advice and counsel. When people have a question, we should be able to open up the Word of God and tell them what God has to say about it. We don't have a black rock and a white rock, okay, to make decisions. What we do is we have a book called the Bible, and that should tell us what God has to say about things. You are to make the robe, verse 31, make the robe of the ephod entirely of blue yarn. There should be an opening at its top. In the center of it, around the opening, there should be a woven collar with an opening like that of body armor so that it does not tear. Make pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn on its lower hem and all around it. Put gold bells between them uh, all the way around so that gold bells and pomegranates alternate uh, around the lower hem of the robe. The robe will be worn by Aaron whenever he ministers, and its sound will be heard. When he enters the sanctuary before the Lord, and when he exits, so that he does not die. Do that. We got the hem, pomegranates, and uh, and gold bells. Pomegranates and gold bells. Now, this is remember once again. This is to be a beautiful, ornate outfit. It's to be for glory and for beauty, right? People should look at it and see the seriousness of this person's role and also the high calling this person has. And we should not forget that we have been called to a high calling. The priestly role is to be almost kind of like a king. It is supposed to be held in high regard. It has real authority. We as priests are, are called to something great, not just a servant position. It's a high calling. 
You are to make pure gold, uh, a pure gold medallion and engrave it like the engraving of a seal. It shall say, holy to the Lord. Fasten it to a cord of blue yarn so it can be placed on the turban. So on the turban, on the forehead, holy to the Lord. The medallion is to be in front of the turban, on the front of the turban. It will be on Aaron's forehead so that Aaron may bear the guilt connected with the holy offerings that the Israelites consecrate as all their holy gifts. It is always to be on his forehead so that they may find acceptance before the Lord. Notice it says here that Aaron may bear the guilt connected with the offerings. The high priest is to bear the guilt of the people. And only one man is going to ever truly be able to do that, Jesus Christ. He bears our guilt and pays the penalty for it. You are to weave the tunic from fine linen, make a turban of fine linen, and make an embroidered sash. It kind of holds it all together, right? Make tunics, sash, and make tunics, sashes, and headbands for Aaron's sons to give them glory and beauty. Put these on your brother Aaron and his sons, then anoint, ordain, and consecrate them so that they may serve me as priests. Make them linen undergarments to cover their naked bodies. They must extend to the waist, from the waist to the thighs. These must be worn by Aaron and his sons whenever they enter the tent of meeting or approach the altar to minister in the sanctuary area so that they do not incur guilt and die. This is to be a permanent statute for Aaron and for his future descendants. So, again, that's what it ends up looking like. Something along these lines. The undergarments, the turban, the gold plate, holy to the Lord, the six, six names of, on this uh, onyx stone, and the six names on this onyx stone, and then the 12 tribes on each of those stones on a fabric breast, breast, please, uh, breast plate. And then there's going to be uh, the uh, Urum and Thuman uh, back there behind there. The sash. And that's the rest of the ephod. And then the uh, tunic. And it's supposed to have the, uh, the bells and pomegranates and the linen undergarment there. And we got, we're not told anything about the, what he's supposed to wear on his feet. So uh, that is left up to everyone else, I guess. All right, friends, let me pray a prayer of blessing over you. But uh, meditate on that today, that you are called as a priest to a position of glory and beauty. It's a high calling. And it's uh, sometimes we, we make it out to be uh, that it's not, that we're just called to serve and just serve. It's, it's a position of honor and glory that we've been called to. We can make a real difference in people's lives if we're obedient, if we're faithful. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you bless each and every one watching this video today, that you would fill them with your Holy Spirit, that they would be empowered and strengthened to accomplish this priestly work that you have called us to. Lord, I pray that you would put upon our hearts and upon our shoulders the names and the people that you would have us to serve, that we would take responsibility for them, that we would bring to them the good news of the high priest who has taken their guilt and has set them free, that they would place their faith in him and be saved. Lord, we pray all these things in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Thanks so much for joining with us again here today. There are a few uh, playlists up here on the side of other Bible studies, especially as we approach the uh, weekend, in case uh, you want to continue doing Bible studies on the weekend as well. All right, friends, God bless you all. Have a great day, and I'll see you again here tomorrow.